So this patient's coming in for removal of the lesions on the left upper side or mid back. Um, this has all the characteristics of a, an epidermal or an epidermoid cyst. Um, we put some anesthesia in around here. And when it's raised like this, the membrane is going to be very, very superficial. So what I'll try and do is just do a very fine linear incision and see how we can explore that. But I would tell whoever's doing this procedure, you could easily convert that. Like if it, if I feel like it's it's ruptured and we want more space, I could just convert that to an elliptical incision. The reason why I'd start with a linear incision is just sometimes afterwards it's simpler. You don't have to add in the deep dermal sutures. Um, so we'll see how this goes and sort of proceed from there. So again, no pain there at all. No. So this is the number 15 blade. This is gonna seem ridiculously superficial. So again, that's done on purpose because if it is possible to salvage this membrane at all we'll have to work very gently with it but we're not deep enough for me to do much with that so this is again a lesion that's thought to develop from trauma so trauma driving the epidermal cells down into the dermis so when I get to the right level what you'll see here is when it doesn't open up, it's being resisted by the dermis, which is still attached. I would see there that it's open. Now see there on this side here, that started to open up. So while this side wasn't open enough, this side actually is. So what I'll do with that, and you see me do this, these are I think the snaps in the states, these are curved cryleys that we use. So I open it up so it protects the underlying space. And I'll just use that and extend it along. Just so that I'm at the right level. And I don't compromise the cyst at all. So now if, you, if anybody's seen enough of these videos, you should be able to tell that this is cis membrane underneath it. So that's what we're looking for. So what I'm doing is I'm using the curved cryolates to gently break down some surface adhesions. You can do this with um, scissors as well. That's, that's more of a sharp dissection. The only risk, obviously, and I might, I might do a little bit in a second, um, the only risk, obviously, is that you can rupture the membrane. So you can see just in doing that, it's, it's popped up a little bit. Now I'm going to extend that just a little bit more. Not a ton, just enough of it. I'm going to do that on both sides. So you can appreciate when I'm doing that, you can see underneath that that's on this side, that's sweeping nicely to that side. There's a bit of an adhesion up through here, which I'll try and just break down a bit. This can be somewhat frustrating to, to watch on uh, the video perspective, because I know it's just, it just looks like I'm doing the same thing repeatedly. This is just one of those situations where you just take a little bit of time. It does help a lot. So you see there, that's breaking down that adhesion. And you're okay? This isn't hurting? No. And again, it, if this does rupture, it's not a big issue. And typically, I would tell you, pilar scissor 
notoriously simpler to, to get out entirely intact. Epidermal cysts are a little bit more of a challenge. So you can see now, so this is what the, these are what the adhesions look like. This is why oftentimes we'll try and sweep with my Cryly or if I'm using a Kelly's, because you can just break them down so easy. So I'm trying to get this from the back, only because if you see from the front, it's broken down a little bit. There's a little bit of a rupture in the capsule. So now just because I have a better idea where I'm at. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to release just some of the surrounding tissues so it pops out a little bit more. So I've clamped across where it's open a little bit. See, now you can see behind here, so this is just adhesion that's there. You can see that's still the membrane that's there. So if we just break this apart a bit. That's it there, so and that contains the typical keratin that you normally see all through there, just like that. And that's completely intact. So I'm just gonna explore just, just a little bit. So here again, you can see now. Um, because we've taken out mass, as opposed to having put in deep dermal sutures, because I haven't done an elliptical incision, um, I can just do basic in uninterrupted sutures. You can see here's just a tail end. 
some of the cyst here. So the back end is just a little bit adherent. try and get a headpiece. Um, I don't know how well it'll look because it's on magnified glasses, but just so that you can maybe see in here a little bit better. So you can see around there's no actual residual membrane at all. Nothing up through there, nothing up through there, so that looks good. So as a last stage, I'm just going to grab a bit of a curette. This one's a bit thick. I'm just going to clean that out just a bit. Good. So now I can just use fluoroproline, which is a non-absorbable suture type. Three loops. Now, in cases like this, just because I do a, just a basic linear incision, I'll still sometimes put in dermal sutures. If it was in an area where I thought there was going to be a lot of pressure, where he's bending in a joint space or those type of things, you can always put that in. And I think as somebody who's watching can always have the argument, well, why would you not always put them in? Because they do add strength. And there is that argument to be had, but you also have to keep in mind that the body can react to things off unusually. And I, I find in general that if I don't have to add things, I won't. So, so long as we can keep this relatively dry, this should heal nicely. So by dry, I mean just not exposed to a water source. I do like, um, not that I have any association with them whatsoever, but La Roche-Posay makes a product. I don't know if that's a, is that just a Canadian company? Um, anyway, here, I'm certain you have similar products in the States. But I usually have my patients use it. It's it's just good at settling down scarring potential. And that's something obviously will add a little bit of moisture. And I just have them put that on once a day. So that I'm not worried about. But when you talk about getting in the shower, I have my patients use a water type bandage because that type tap water, there can be a lot of um, bacteria there that can get these infected. I've really not had trouble with infections through my career, knock on wood. And you can also see what looks like really redundant, um, unhealthy or regular tissue beforehand. As long as you remove the cyst underneath, this will tighten up a little bit. And the, uh, the cicoplast stuff will help a little bit with that. You're okay? Mm -hmm. Good.